Because we got a live wire out here on this Monday. Hey. You may be seated. It is an honor to finish this no for you today to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr., his life, his legacy, <laughs> and those of us that still champion the cause. You know, I'm here just for a brief moment, but I really would like to leave you with something of significance, something that you can think about. There was a guy, his name was Kwame Nkrumah. Can you say Kwame Nkrumah? Kwame oh. says, I have one too. Mine's not a dream, it's more a determination. And it's four words. The four words are, Always forward, never backwards. Can you say always forward? Always, always forward. forward. Never, backwards. never backwards. And I believe when we ask the question, what's next? Are relations better than they were yesterday? I'm not here to equate, evaluate, and do an assessment. I just know we need to keep moving forward. Amen. Now's not the time to go to sleep. Now is not the time to just let politics happen as usual and sit back with a bag of popcorns, bonbons, and ice cream and watch news on television, but it's time to get active and let right. the world know, and America in particular, what we stand for. The values of all people. I wish I had a witness in here somewhere. Yeah. 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 And what we find here, this prime minister, when he invited Dr. Martin Luther King, they came together. And he has a big statue erected with Kwame Nkrumah on it. And he's got one fist going forward and another one going backwards. And it states always forward, never backwards. It didn't mean you can't think about your past. It means don't get stuck in your past. That's right. Don't let your past hinder your future. That's right. Yes, we were slaves. Yes, we were mistreated. Yes, we were abused. Yes, there were atrocities. But we are doing better than that now so let's not get stuck. We got new issues to deal with. That's right. I wish I had a church in here. <laughs> so if you hear me real good, and I hope and trust that you do, I've got Bible to back it up. Paul himself said in Philippians 13 and 14, forgetting that stuff that is behind me, there's one thing that I intend to do. I'm going to reach for those things which are ahead of me. Yes. And I don't care what it takes, I'm going to press, somebody shout, yes. toward the mark of the prize of the higher calling of God in Jesus Christ. That's right. I don't know about you, but is your neighborhood going to be better when you leave than when you got there? That's right. Yep. Is the job you have going to be better when you leave than when you got there? That's right. I believe so too. So as we introduce Highland's Mind Team, we let you know, visualize and Highland. We're all on the same team. I got my war clothes on. Yeah. I'm not intimidated by the fight. Yeah. So let's do it because we're on. Somebody shout, the winning side. Yeah. Come yeah. on, visualize. Take us there. America the beautiful. Is that what we say? We have shamed our country with war and hate. Loss of life from war to guns. How can we be number one? We say we love what we truly hate. Colors of skin are what keeps us apart. But it's wrong. It's troubling. It's upsetting our hearts. We should love one another, stick together like a brother. That is what Americans do, that represent our grand old flag, the red, white, and blue. Many people have died for the sake of the cost. What will it take for Americans to see that we live and die to set men free? The American flag symbolizes freedom. It is symbolic of all things true. That flag that we love represents me and you. We are Americans, the brave, the proud, and the free. So why, in the name of God, do we hate our liberty? The stripes, the stars, the colors so true. We are America, the red, white, and blue.
So they, they roost? Yes. Yeah, so it's like, what is roosting? Or? Yeah, yeah. They like hang, you were saying they like hang on with their little feet? Yeah, so they're, so swifts are gregarious birds. They are roosting right now. So it means that they're sleeping together as a group. So they all go to the chimney and then they'll funnel in and then they're hanging on to the sides of the chimney with, with their feet. Okay. And then propping themselves up with the spikes on their tail. You can kind of see those spikes there. Okay. Um, and they do that for a couple of reasons. So first of all, safety in numbers from predators like Cooper Sock who's up there right now. Yeah. There's um, one up there now? Yeah. yeah okay. You kind That's of why they're not going right in there. Right there. Oh. oh, he's on the top. Yeah, he oh. is. Yeah, so he'll just sit on, on the chimney and then Ooh, as, as they start to get closer to he head in, he'll, he'll jump off and grab one. Okay. Wow. So, so it's partially safety in numbers, but it's also for warmth. Yeah. So swifts, they spend their entire life on the wing. So they, their feet are, are incapable of perching. So instead, so that means that they're, they're always flying. They eat while flying, drink while flying, mate while flying, sleep while flying. Yeah. It's always flying. Mate while flying, yeah. sleep while flying. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So because of that, like, I mean, they're basically running around all the time. So they're really good at cooling themselves down. But it kind of backfires when they actually stop because they're not super good at warming themselves up. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, there but so it's also, but so they're all coming together through warm. So they all share body heat. And also like that chimney is like three bricks thick. So it's really like a lot of insulation. Keeps yeah. Up uh, so personally, I this is my third year here. Okay. But Audubon has been here for ages. I think since like the early 2000s. Okay. Wow. Um, so this chimney is actually it has an interesting story. So the Swiss started coming here in the 1980s, the early 1980s, and at that time the chimney was actually still functional okay. as like a furnace for the school. And so the the schools wouldn't turn the chimney off until they all left. And that's kind of a problem. So you have a bunch of elementary school kids in there who are cold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then in like 2001, Portland Audubon teamed up with a bunch of community sponsors to buy a new furnace for the school and retire that chimney. So now they don't use that chimney anymore. And then the collar on it, like the brace, is actually earthquake retrofitting. Okay. We did that later. Uh, so now if there's an earthquake, the chimney won't fall down and it'll still be there for the switch. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Is this their full size? Yes. Yeah, that is they full look adult. Not that tiny when they're flying. Yeah, it's, it's really funny. Like some people say they look bigger, some people say they look smaller, but yeah, they're about they're so small. I mean, look at that's the body. <laughs> no, yeah. it's just. Yeah, it's they're, they're wow. absolutely tiny. Like people describe them as like a cigar with wings. <laughs> they're they're really small. Huh. Yeah. That's... So their closest relative is actually the hummingbird. So. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's in a couple features. So partially, again, it's that feet. So mm -hmm. hummingbirds, well, they can perch. You know, Constant motion. Yeah. Yeah, they can't. They still have, like, those short legs. They can't really, like, hop around on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also in the wing shape. So they have a shorter humerus and, like, a longer hand. And so it makes them super maneuverable. They can rotate their wings really well. Yeah. And they can change the area of their wings with that longer hand portion. And so yeah. that, like, lets them kind of, again, like, be really maneuverable and change the way that they fly. Cool. Wow. <laughs> Don't poop on me, bird. Where do they head after this? After this, so there are a couple more roost stops down in Oregon we'll probably be heading to. There's like one in Eugene, uh, closer there's one in Oregon City. Um, and then like in the upper part of California, it's more like the Redwoods. There aren't really many chimney roosts there that have been identified yet, probably because they're going into the Redwoods as they naturally would yeah. in the wild. And then there are a couple more down in California. There's like some in LA, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think maybe one in like San Jose, if I remember correctly. So they're, they just kind of leap all the way down until they get to the final destination, which is like southern Mexico, Central America, and a little bit of northern Venezuela. Okay. So, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And where do they start? So they start in their in their breeding region, which is all throughout Washington and Oregon, a little bit of northern California, and then all the way through BC and a little bit, tiny, tiny bit into Alaska. So. Cool. Thanks for time. Well, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah.
You vanquish the hawk. So sure, I'm quite sure. Did the couple go in? Yeah, a bunch of women, yeah. Woo! Look at him slow. Oh, it's so cool! Wow. Thanks for asking. Jeez. 
<laughs> so orderly.
quiet neighborhood street in East Portland. Each house, each business, each organization has its own unique life, its own unique story. And even with the ability to reach the entire world in their pockets, many neighbors are choosing to focus their time and energy where they can have the most impact, their nearby community, their neighborhood. They're supporting neighborhood businesses and services. They're learning about their schools and community organizations. They're finding ways to get involved and take action. Village Portland was founded to spotlight localism and celebrate this important kind of community service. It's your village. Let's explore it together. <laughs>